In the last few videos, we've talked about the on-chip cache hierarchy. I'll now spend some time discussing the off-chip main memory system. So we have a processor chip, you have the processor core that we've designed in the past, and then you have an L1 and an L2 hierarchy. And if you don't find data in your on-chip cache hierarchy, you're going to go off-chip. This is usually done with a memory channel that comes out of the processor. And connected to that processor is a memory module, also known as a DIM, which is a dual inline memory module. And this DIM has memory chips, you know, both on the front as well as on the back side of, of this board. And this collection of memory chips is, is together referred to as the main memory system. And you can have multiple channels and you can have multiple DIMMs connected to each one of these channels. Now, if you look at the on-chip caches, they are designed with cells that are referred to as SRAM cells or static RAM cells. Each of these cells is nothing but a series of back-to-back -back inverters. And because of this feedback loop, once you put data into one of these cells, that data kind of stays there as long as you have power. Now, SRAM cells or caches built out of SRAM cells have relatively low latency but they also don't have very good density. That means you can't pack a whole bunch of data into these on-chip SRAM caches, but you can access them at either one or two cycles if it's relatively small, or tens of cycles if it's a larger L2 or L3 cache. Once you go off-chip, you know that you're going to spend hundreds of cycles getting the data, right? So once you go off-chip, the focus is not so much on latency, the focus is instead on density. That means you're trying to pack as much data as possible into a few chips, right? Or in other words, you're trying to minimize the cost per bit. So given a certain budget, you're trying to maximize the memory capacity in your main memory system. And the reason to do that is, you know, once you run out of memory, once your data does not fit in memory, you're going to have to place your disk at the next level of the hierarchy, which is typically the hard disk drive, which has a latency that is, you know, thousand times higher than main memory latency. Okay, so to avoid having to go to disk, you try to maximize as much capacity as you can in your memory system, and you're trying to minimize the cost per bit, right? So that's why these memory chips are designed with a technology that's referred to as dynamic random access memory. So each cell is actually nothing but a capacitor, and what you're trying to do is put charge into this capacitor, and depending on how much charge you put, it's either going to be a 1 or a 0. So these cells are very dense because all it takes is a single capacitor and an access transistor for every bit of data. And so you can pack a lot more data into every single chip. The latency for access is going to be higher. And the other problem with this memory is that once you put charge on the capacitor, that charge tends to leak away over time. So periodically you have to read the data in these cells and then write it back again so that you don't forget what data had been placed in each one of these capacitors. And because of this refresh process, this memory is referred to as dynamic random access memory, right? So in static random access memory, once you place data, it does not have to be refreshed anymore. But for the off-chip main memory system, because you have to periodically do this refresh process, it's referred to as dynamic random access memory. Now you could have, you know, 32, 64, 128 chips all coming together to provide a really large high capacity memory system. So like I said before, you could have multiple channels coming out of the CPU. Each channel could accommodate you know, multiple DIMMs. And each DIMM has many memory chips, both on the front side as well as on the back side. So all of these chips collected together give you a very high capacity memory system. So now let's look at a few more details about exactly how memory is organized. And so here's another figure that shows the processor. On the processor, you have a memory controller which handles all of your requests to the memory system. And then you have this channel coming out. It's broken up as address command wires or address command signals, and then data bus signals. And on that channel, you have these DIMMs that are plugged in. So I'm showing you one side of a DIMM over here, and you know on the back side of the DIMM as well, you have more memory chips. So each one of these orange rectangles here is one memory chip. And so when you make a request, the memory controller essentially issues the request on this address command bus, saying that here's the address that I'm interested in, and here's the corresponding command, either a read or a write, let's say. Now, the memory is nothing but rows and rows and rows of data, right? So each one of these chips has just rows and rows of data. 
there's really not much logic or intelligence on these memory chips, right? So these memory chips are pretty much dumb for the most part. And all the intelligence required in retrieving data from the memory system is localized in this memory controller. So the memory controller knows where all the data is placed. It knows the state of all of these structures. It knows if there are any structural hazards, if there are any conflicts for certain resources. And it makes sure that it staggers the request appropriately so that there is never any conflict for these shared resources. So the memory controller issues a request and then gets the data back. Because this data access takes so long, you're trying to hide some of that memory latency. You can't really reduce that memory latency. All you can do is perhaps hide some of that latency. And the way to hide that latency is, you know, while a certain portion of memory is busy retrieving a block of data, you can issue requests to other portions of memory as well. So the memory system is broken up into many sub regions and you have something called a rank. I won't get into details of that, but essentially even a rank is broken up into many banks. So you can view the memory system as a large collection of banks and each bank can be involved in one memory transfer. And all of these banks could be busy all at the same time working on different cache line requests. So by having this high level of parallelism, you can hide the fact that each access itself takes you know, many hundreds of cycles. So what I'm showing you in this example here is one bank and you'll see that the bank itself is striped across a whole bunch of memory chips. So when you make a request for data, you are going to read portions of the data from all of these many banks. And each bank brings in a bunch of data into a structure which is referred to as the row buffer, right? So each bank reads out some data and puts it into this row buffer structure. And then from here, the data gets sent back on the data bus back to the CPU. Now the row buffer is actually a few kilobytes in size. So when you make a 64 byte request, you're essentially prefetching about a few kilobytes of data into this row buffer. Because of spatial locality, if your next accesses are to neighboring cache lines that have already been brought into the row buffer, that next cache line request can be serviced faster, right? So if your data is sitting in the bank, it's going to be a fairly high latency. If the data has already been brought from the bank into the row buffer and you're accessing something in the row buffer, that's referred to as a row buffer hit and that takes a little less time to access. So the row buffer is a little bit like a cache inside my memory system. And so if you have spatial locality, you can exploit that row buffer cache that is sitting inside the memory. So there's a lot more about the memory system that I can get to, but for the purpose of this class, I think this high level overview is enough. This kind of conveys the very basics of the memory system and you learn much more about the memory system in a graduate level class.